Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Colleagues, third issue is fight against corruption. Fight against corruption. The fight will continue. Very straight and clear. The fight against corruption shall continue. Actually, we are now more ready than before. We have amended the laws. Three or so pieces of legislation that were standing in the way. We have created the Economic and Financial Crimes Court, dedicated prosecutions. We have also amended the practicing procedures. You already know this, I'm reminding you, the nation, that any such crimes will be prosecuted within five months. If you were banking that you can survive for another 20 years and there will be another government you have missed the shot within five months the prosecutions will be done of course after due investigations as i've always said no arresting innocent people investigate first arrest prosecute court within five months I can see the jitters, I can see the panic. I feel it. That's why there's this carelessness you are seeing now, threatening people. Honestly, you were threatening people when you were in government. You are outside government. You are still threatening people. Bushi, what sort of thinking is that? Even if you are a violent man, what sort of thinking is that? Now, those you threatened when they were outside government, and they're in government, uh, you believe they're standing on the same position? Honestly? That is unfortunate. Why should we threaten each other? Let's talk to each other. Let's dialogue. Let's talk to each other. But the fight against corruption continues two angles. Asset recovery. There's no turning back. Asset recovery Restore the money to the owners. Children need desks. That's their money. We need medicines in hospitals. We need... Minister of Finance is here. We need to increase CDF even more. It's doing wonders. That was the money which was being stolen. Now it's available for CDF. To train kids. Artisanal skills to send children to boarding schools, those who are not able to afford parents, so to say, to pay retirees. That's why we need to asset recover. Colleagues, the next arm is prosecution. I've heard people saying, no, no, asset recovery is, uh, is not enough. Two things, asset recovery and prosecutions, which will lead to acquittal or conviction. Conviction, you go in. So you lose the money you store, so you don't buy expensive lawyers. Then you go in. We are fortunate that this government has bought mattresses because we are human beings. We are not animals. We are human beings, respecting the rights of people, even those in detention or in correctional services. That's my message. No one will use language to escape the fight against corruption. 
corruption of today, tomorrow, yesterday, today, tomorrow. No one. You can't escape by saying, I'm a member of a political party. No. You can't escape by saying, because of my tribe. This smelly stuff, which we keep propagating. Yet when you fall in love with a beautiful woman, you don't ask what language they speak. You just marry. Can you see what nature does? Nature drives you to do the right things. How can you hate where you love? It's not possible. No religion will protect any corrupt. As I said about criminality, no religion will protect a criminal. If you are an Adventist like me, and you steal public resources, me, the elder, will work to put you inside. Yes. I'm the elder in the church. Me, the elder, I will work very hard to put you in and take away the money you took from the people. That goes for any church. And please, churches, don't stand for the corrupt and stroke religious emotions. No. When people steal, they don't steal for the church. They don't steal for the tribe. They steal because of their greed. Simple. So that's all. I have nothing more to say around the fight against corruption. It will continue. We are better place now. We've also done our benchmarking. We've signed various agreements with international parties. Our job will be more effective now than before. We've done our homework in the last two years. That's why you are seeing more recoveries now. I'm sure you've noted the trend has changed. More recoveries. And we will push that hard. There's no room for theft, petty or large scale. And by the way, Cabinet yesterday agree, again agreed to increase the penalties for those that steal from the people. For those that pull away electric cables, for those that vandalize public assets, private assets, you go in for a longer period. We want a country where corruption, theft is not tolerated. Investments will come from fellow citizens. If you invest in a center pivot, one hectare center pivot, which is what we are promoting, a crank comes in the night and steals the motor. And that center pivot, one hectare center pivot, is owned by a widow who got support from CDF or from CEC or indeed under the disaster. And I'm going to talk about it. And the center pivot is gone. Food security is gone. Why should we promote such people in our country? Actually, there is no line. People say there's a thin line between the corrupt and the thieves. No, it's one and the same. It's the same coin. You just flip it. Right? Fellow citizens, disaster and emergence. We declare the disaster and emergence early on. Ahead of the pack. That's what leadership is, not to wait for the pack. The drought we've never seen in memory. That's a phenomenon of God or nature. It isn't man-made. Climate change, yes, you can say it's instigated by pollution, yes. But really, which country receives rain, which doesn't receive rain, is not a decision of any particular leader or government or people. We get afflicted. And we declared this drought, which has caused food insecurity, energy insecurity, transcending into economic, potential economic shutdown when there's no energy. 
as a disaster and emergency. Our focus is due, one, to feed the people, to feed fellow citizens. No one should die of hunger. And all of us, Secretary of the Cabinet, we left State House yesterday around 22, 23 hours to make sure that we secure food for all our people in the 84 districts determined by science, by research, that there is a drought. Food must move to our people. Reverse order. Where FRA buys maize from, we are taking maize back to those depots, closer to the people. Very clear agenda. And your government, ministers, cabinet, permanent secretaries, this is the time we work double shift. Procurement people, please don't sit on decisions because you are looking for something. You will be in line for trouble. We were here up to 22, 23 hours last night to make decisions, to move, bring in enough maize, to mop the maize from different corners within the country and elsewhere and move it. Food for work at a lower price, enhanced social cash transfer to support our people so they don't die of hunger. This is a big program. It's a national program. It's not a UPND government or alliance program. It's a national program. All of us must support it. And if we start petting, encouraging people to fight in the markets instead of focusing on the drought, what sort of leaders are we? Honestly speaking, really? The second arm is to increase, improve our resilience. When the drought hits us next, we should be better prepared in many ways. One, we must water harvest for irrigation, for productivity improvement. At least when we irrigate, one center people was talking about, solar energy, whatever source of energy, that's what we're working on. Colleagues in energy, we have a meeting this week, Friday, to assess the progress we're making so that we don't have an economic shutdown. As colleagues in water, again, yesterday in the cabinet meeting, we took decisions on energy, on water, to alleviate the food insecurity situation, the energy insecurity, the threat on the economic activity. Power must be available to irrigators so we can produce food, even the dry season. That's a serious problem. We need everybody's hands and brain ideas, and they are all welcome. So, if that is what is preoccupying us, why should we now be digressed by lawlessness, by sowing seeds of pangas again in the markets, reminding the youth of what it was just two years, 11 months ago. Human nature, the people react. Say, oh, people react that way. We shouldn't do those things. Let's focus on feeding the people and working on irrigation. I'm not saying we shut down democracy. It's not what I'm saying. It's what someone who writes that the president said shut down democracy. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we must understand our priorities. We must understand the need to maintain the rule of law. We must understand the need to fight corruption. That's what I'm saying. My message is simple and clear. So I ask the whole government machinery, 
We're working with the civil society. We're working with the church. Those who have capacity to distribute, we're working with them. If you know an institution you're associated with which has experienced knowledge of distribution of food to the vulnerable, Cabinet Office is there, DMMU is there as a team who will enlist that, that organization. Women organizations, as I said, church, civil society, international organizations. We're working with the UN system here. I think that's our responsibility. God says, I put you in charge at a particular time, not your choosing, but my choosing. That's God. And when I do that, I will not give you a load you cannot carry. You will be able to carry it. But for us to carry that load, we must be organized. We must work together. We must not throw money or allow it to be stolen. Because we need every penny to now avail food and irrigation for our people. That's the message. We ask the country to support this agenda. Storage, all of those things. We shouldn't be able to have no food for one season. We should now invest in storage, and we're doing that. We're budgeted for it now. It's going to happen. It may take time, but it will happen. I want to assure citizens. Lastly, rebuilding the economy. That's our agenda. In the last two years, eight, nine months, you can see as citizens that this is the agenda of this government to rebuild the run-down economy. Strangely, those who are constraining and standing in the way are the very people who damage the economy. How ironic can that be? You mess up the well, the only well where the whole country draws water from, and you walk away because you took some benefits for yourself, but the country has no water. Community has no water. Some team comes along, they're cleaning the water. You climb the anti hill. No, they have failed to clean the water. Why did you mess it up in the first place? If you're a serious human being, you should have never messed up that well. The resources we, little we have, we should have been using to build more wells. You, you messed up in the well. Sometimes we must have a bit of shame. Husbands, wives, Wives, talk to your husbands when they, they mess up badly. Husbands, talk to your wives when they mess up badly. Quietly, render some advice. Vashvantu, apamule endira, ah, te pasuma. Hmm? Mayo, vanae church, apayo. That's what decent human beings do. When you clap for such behavior, you are emboldening bad behavior. You are emboldening that. Really? Yes. So we have been working to clean this well so the Zambian people can have clean water, which is not polluted. This effort requires support. We inherited a big debt. Today we stand here. As we were working to clean up the debt mountain, where the debt went up, the economy went down. This doesn't work. In my little training, when the liability goes up, the asset goes up. Then the two can balance. So the asset went down, the liability went up. You don't have to be trained in this field you will know there's a problem here. And our duty has been to dismantle the debt, debt restructuring. And colleagues have been saying, no, no, it's not possible. They will never make it. Can you tell them, tell Situmbeko, HH, tell Situmbeko to look at plan B and plan C, because you will never achieve debt restructuring. Do you blame them? Maybe you shouldn't. 
If they had the capacity, they would have never left us with that debt. One, two, they would have cleaned up the debt themselves. They dumped it, left it. And today I stand here to say we have made so much progress on the debt restructuring. A few days ago, the bondholders voted overwhelmingly to support the debt restructuring component to deal with the bondholders. That should be a celebration point. <laughs> Yesterday, the IMF, in a program with us, our program, which we invited the IMF to support us, do six monthly reviews, correct me if I'm wrong, six monthly reviews. They came for a review with all the challenges we have. Yesterday, they confirmed that we have passed yet again that test and the program of support to us in our restructuring of our economy, our finances will continue. It's what the nation must rally around. The whole nation must rally around this. Especially that in the Mulanda, they know a pangiro Mulan too. Honestly speaking, I'm not, we are the ones, but we take responsibility. You see how much we are? We take responsibility. This is a rallying point, shouldn't be a divisive point. What else? Minister of Finance. We made a call for an additional support of how much within the fund program? An extra three. They were supposed to only release how much? 188. Because of the appeal we made following the circumstances we faced, including the drought, that's why we declared the disaster and the emergency early on, proactively. They've now been able to extend almost another 400 million, almost 400 million dollars. That was decided yesterday. Now, honestly, even if you have a hatred of fellow citizens, is that a source of hatred? Is that where you drive hatred to them, working like that? You don't. So we will continue within the drought environment, food insecurity, energy insecurity, we will continue working hard to rebuild this economy because we know that's where the solution is. Yes, it's painful. Absolutely. And we understand. We're working on many variables, long hours, but also efficient working. When work has to be done, we have to do it, ministers. Cabinet office, permanent secretaries. That's why we are in this public office. When work calls, we have to do the work in the interest of the people of Zambia. In Livingstone, a few days ago, I said something there. It was a summit of five countries, five heads of state. Namibia, Angola, Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Zambia. And I was chairing that summit of my colleague presidents and technical staff. And I said, I used the phraseology that we must change the way we work in the public sector. We shouldn't call working to mean eight hours to 17 hours then we say we have worked. I said no. The fact that you are in office from 8 hours to 17 hours, it is not true to, to imply that you have been working. Maybe you have been hanging around. That is true. That's my core. We need to work hard. We need to focus on deliverables. Work hard and focus on deliverables. Then we will help the people. We will help the children in school those who are faced with hunger, and water shortages, by the way. We will continue working. Please, I make a call to the drillers. 
you cannot charge those amounts during a drought situation. I have a debt with you. You heard what I said. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. A boho that should cost 35,000 kwacha. Colleagues in the public sector, in the procurement units, are trying to book those bores for three, 400,000 kwacha. When you remove you, you say, no, tribalism. You say, no, 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 no. Because I don't belong to their church. That's what you, you like saying. A boho for 30,000 kwacha must be 35,000 kwacha not 200,000. That's a departure point. In the time of drought, you do those shenanigans, that's a departure point. Uh -huh. You say, he has said that before. Watch the space. My choice is now clear. Two and a half years, two years, nine months, I wanted to accommodate people to get them to change. I have now seen they have refused to change. That's a departure point. <laughs> what else can I do? I'm a lover of national unit. I'm a tolerant person. But when you don't want to do what you should do, and you want to hide behind ethnicity or church or civil society or anything else, that's a departure point. You will see a few exits from this hour. Don't call me names. Tell those people they should have done their work for the good of the people of Zambia. Don't look at me. Look at them. Give them counsel. A tender committee in the ministry insists that one ball plus accessory should be half a million one way, half a million, when you can do it, boho plus accessories, 80,000. People want to charge half a million, 500,000. Please come on. Nivuto, Banji, Zambians, learn to distinguish between a victim and an aggressor. A person who behaves like that is the aggressor. They shouldn't come to you pretending they're victims. No, they're not. My management style is that I tell you I'm coming your way. There's no hiding. I actually tell you I'm coming your way. You don't want to do the right things, I'm coming. I think that's a fair way. I, I started practicing this management style from the age 27. I can't change now. But many a time, you think that, oh, he's not aware. <laughs> I'm very much alive. I'm aware. But the idea is to build. If you're a true leader, you're a true manager, you try and build people. But now I know they've refused to change. So, we'll continue working to build this economy. We want to now begin to see the benefits of the debt restructuring coming through. If it were not for the drought, this year we were going to harvest over probably close to 5 million tons. Zambians responded to our call. I'm told even those who work for saloons even cultivated half an acre. You know what I mean. I was proud of all of you, and thank you for answering the call. But God had a reason to allow the drought. Slapping us in the face, irrigate, 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 be more efficient, and we're working on that. Many government programs will continue, colleagues, to reconstruct our economy, to create jobs, more than public sector jobs. We want to see the private sector creating jobs. And some of my friends in the private sector were looking for quick fixes. Actually, I realized that people's ambitions sometimes meet somewhere between the crooks and those who pretend to be genuine businessmen, because they wanted shortcuts, things given to them. We can't give you things if we don't have any. That's why we needed to restructure the debt. That's why we need to grow the economy. Just come on board. The old habits, you see what colleagues were doing? They wanted the old habits that, like violence, to go away, 
and corruption, that they continue doing the bad things, such as what? Getting contracts to supply air. Ah, uh -uh, no. No, 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 no. That's not business. That's not business. So you hear a bit of noise here and there. It's a reconstruction process. We shall be okay. Even with a drought, we shall overcome. We work together. We work harder. The million meal price, issues of fuel, they're sitting right in my head every day. I pull them and look at them every day, agonizing, seek expertise inside, outside. We're working on these issues from all fronts. As I said, if it were not for the drought, would have a surplus maize, the issue of million meal would have never been an issue. But please accept that this is beyond our control. In economics, we say that's an exogenous variable. It's outside our control. But we still work hard using the endogenous variables, those that are within our control. But we never give up. It's a temporal situation. Fellow citizens, time is now to get a bit more serious with the way we do things in this country. There's too much noise. Social media, just noise, just noise, too much noise. That noise will not solve problems. You have suggestions, bring them to the table. You want to go in the streets? No. You'll find me standing in front of you. You want to break people's properties? No. You have ideas? You're welcome. You want to irrigate an acre, you are welcome. FISIP, CDF, number two, number three, civil service financing scheme. We've lowered the interest, correct me if I'm wrong, from 18% to 9% to allow those even in the public sector to borrow money at a lower cost to produce something. Imagine if just five million of us out of 20 million just planted the one hectare, just one hectare, even as a family, five million families, just a hectare. And each one of us in a hectare produced 200 bucks. I've worked the numbers, so I'm pulling these figures. 200 bucks multiplied by five million families. The answer is there. We need to work. We shouldn't spend. People start posting st stuff on social media. Zero four. Zero four. And one post, a lie is posted, then is extrapolated by seven hours, is taken as a, a truth. As you know, lies move faster, isn't it? But they have short legs. Eh? Eventually, you get caught. You skim. You get caught. I want to close by saying to you, you were gassing people. We have now decided to do a formal investigation who was gassing people for what reason. I can confirm to you what I said in Kapiri over the launch of the Osaka and Dollar Highway that a forensic audit is now just being defined nicely, the scope of work, a rolling audit for that matter. We look at Osaka and Dollar Road, who paid who $30 million, which account did it come from, where did it go, who collected it, what did they use it for, since there was not even one meter of the road done. That audit is coming. And Zambians, I want to promise you, we will do everything to recover that money and use it to feed our people who are faced with hunger. What else are we doing? I'm confirming to you here that the tribunal on how the loans were acquired, just the principle, the decisions made, I'm going to use a constitutional right or law called the Inquiries Act 
and the draft terms of reference have already been done. And I'll be approving them. And any other processes of this parliament, we are in business. And no one should come to you to cry that, no, I'm being victimized. No, my democratic space is taken. Look, colleagues, let me, be, let me just cite my example. When I was being accused of things in opposition, I stood openly and said, if any one of you know that I stole something, please go and report to the police station. I encourage citizens, even my tormentors, even those who declare that they will lock me up until I die in public. I challenged that friend. I said, why are you threatening? Just, just go to the police. Just report that HH stole this and that and that, and I'll be happy to go to the police to answer and take me to court. When I saw nobody was coming forward, I even offered a three-bedroom house. I'm glad some of you still remember. Three-bedroom house. That house is still there. No one claimed it. It's there. And I decided to put no tenant. It's just there sitting, waiting. <laughs> so why can't my colleagues do the same? If they know they store nothing, why can't they do the same? The guilty are Fellow citizens, I just want to give you encouragement that no matter the difficulties, no matter the challenges, we shall overcome. Working together, we shall overcome. <laughs> One good season is what we need to produce more. Hmm? I won't challenge you. More Vingoma. Most of you don't understand. Only a Tumbukas us will understand. We Tumbukas. More Chimanga. More Mbonye. More Mapukwe. One season. With irrigation, double crop, storage, we shall be okay. We're working on the fuel issue vexing because of so many factors outside our control, global prices, currency issues, which we're looking at as well. We shall overcome, but we need to stand together. We shouldn't allow divisive behavior, calling out people to go in the streets, to ban buildings, to ban Simpson, to ban Zanako, to ban Bank of Zambia. What are you going to lead after the country is put down? In 2015, we actually in the UPND believed we won that election. And my members came to me and said, let's go in the streets. I said, no. No. Let's go, let's go to court. I said, no. The next election is closer. Let's prepare. 2016, we believe we won that election. I'm saying we believe. Please, understand the language. My member said, this time we are going in the streets. Whether you like it or not, HH has said, you are not going in the streets. When our time comes, we want to find buildings there so that we can use them to grow the economy. We petitioned. Our petition was never heard. It was tense. I said, no one goes in the streets. That's who I am. You must check the records of people. Why would anyone want to go into office by inviting young people to go in the streets and beat people and kill each other? Who do you want to lead? But if you were there, why did you create a debt? We have questions for you. A lot of questions for you. So, but don't use innocent people. Those kids need education, not pangas. Those kids need skills. They need empowerment from Mr. Small, medium ministry here. He is also small like the ministry. <laughs> That's why we put him there. Small, medium enterprise. He's a good man. 
this man from Shwanganda. One Zambia, Mwanga, you were winner. One Zambia, ah, Mamon. One Zambia, one nation. One Zambia, one nation. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.